Hello and welcome back to Larry's Furries, where you learn about animals and learn to pronounce your teacher's name. So, uh, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Yay, holiday weekend. So, I'm sure a lot of your other teachers are going to be using the day to talk about social emotional things. So what are we thankful for? Important questions, maybe we'll talk about that later. But right now, this is Larry's Furries. Let's talk turkey. Alright, Kingdom and Amelia, Phylum Cordata, Class Aphis. Those should be not surprising, because we know, because we all know it's coming. It's, it's definitely an animal, a vertebrate, a bird, yes. Alright, Order Galliformes. So this is interesting. So, gal so Galliformes, of course, literally means chicken-shaped, but this is one of the major and old oldest group of birds, yeah, the ones that the ones that are most directly descended from the dinosaurs. It's a very broad classification, including turkeys, grouse, chicken, quail, partridge, pheasants, peafowl, guinea fowl, a whole lot of, uh, of uh, birds. I'm mostly notable for, be for being fairly large birds that, that spend most of their time feeding on the ground. Uh, they, they all fly to su at least some extent, but t but tend to be optimized for uh, short flights, like just retreating up into a tree, as opposed to uh, flying long distances. <sighs> and uh, I'm taxonomy, so I've I've traditionally presented taxonomies, so the scientific classification of uh, of animals and Larry's furries as if it was you know, clear and well and well established. If you've ever really done the research, even so far as looking at the Wikipedia articles on some of the animals that we've covered, you'll know that it's nowhere near as, as clean. So there's, there's lots of debate as to how animals should be classified. The general principle is to try to put them, is to try to put things that are most closely related in an evolutionary sense together. But within the Galliformes, we really don't have any clue what that is. So for the so for the most part, everything everything is just dumped into a family pheasantidae, literally literally pheasants. But really, that's the catch-all category because we don't know which which of the many galliforms are most closely related to which others. It's just a mess. But our particular galliform, we we do know pretty well, Miliagris galopavo. It's the turkey. What, the wild, either the wild turkey or the domestic turkey, they're the same species. It's not, it's not like, say, dogs where the domesticated animals are considered a different species. They're, turkeys are turkeys. And let's, and let's meet them more closely in their wild form. So there's a t picture of a typical wild turkey. Weight, weight ranges five, five and a half to 24 pounds. Um, among turkeys, the females tend to be in the smaller half of that weight range, whereas the males are the larger half. You would know you would know that, of course, if you've ever gone grocery shopping and and looked at the, looked at, compared to weights among the displays in the store. But, but but notably, this is different from the pattern that we saw last week when we when we were looking at hawks, because. You know, with the with the uh, birds of prey, the females are bigger and the males are smaller. With the turkeys, it's the other way around. Females are small, ma males are big. Wingspan, you know, four, four, to, four to five feet. Not not very big wings because they don't because uh, as we said, they don't fly long distances. Uh, turkeys are, are omnivores. They they're mostly going to eat nuts, seeds, roots, insects, things like that. They will sometimes eat small, small animals, so small, small lizards, small rodents. On rare, rare occasions, they're mostly just eating insects and vegetable products. And turkeys will also sometimes eat grass, but they tend to, they tend to prefer you know, seeds and nuts and such. You know, more, dig more digestible plant products. Uh, the, the natural range. So this is interesting. Turkeys are found wild. Pretty much everywhere shown on the map here. So all, all this red area, most of North America, great. The domestic turkeys, the turkeys were domesticated in Mexico by, by the natives there, the, the Mayans and the Aztecs. Then when the Spanish came, 
they 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 found tur turkeys you know among among those peoples and they they the spanish brought brought domestic turkeys back to back to europe with them and from and then from there domestic from spain domestic turkeys spread and became popular um, um, you know throughout throughout europe and so the american co colonists when when they you know, when they came over with their livestock they brought turkeys with them and so the and so the turkeys that we eat on our dinner table even now are the are the ones that were brought, that were brought from from Europe and ultimately and ultimately from Mexico and not the wild turkeys that you might see in your backyard. Inter interesting note as far as far as lineage, but nonetheless they are still all the same species. And let's look at that comparison a little more closely. So here's the wild turkey on the left, and on your right is. A, is a domestic turkey during the, tra the traditional Thanksgiving pardon ceremony. <laughs> so that domestic breed, so blood breasted white's the most common domestic breed now, it was bred for breast meat. So the, the blood breasted whites can't fly, they often can't re even breed without assistance. So this is an example of artificial selection taken to an extreme because these are species. These are animals that could that could not survive in the natural environment. They they only exist based on human farming needs. Wild turkeys are very different. So wild turkeys are excellent flyers. They don't they don't fly long distances, but they but they're very agile in flight. And in fact, in fact, they fly all the time because because uh, wild turkeys, the, although they they get most of their food from the ground, they they sleep at night in the trees, and the reason why wild turkeys sleep in the trees is because you know, a wild turkey is too big. It's an adult turkey is too too big for other birds to to really attack it successfully. So the main predators of turkeys are going to be your your large ground-based carnivores, your wolves, your pumas, okay, yeah, you know, possi possibly some of the smaller wild cats like lynx, bobcats, but not. But all these species are on the ground. You, hi you hide up in the tree, you're less likely to get eaten. And so, tur and so turkeys fly, fly up into the trees at night and they stay safe. At least the wild ones do. The, domest the domestic ones uh, depend rely on, fe on fences and security systems and all, the all those other human innovations to not get, to not get eaten until we want to eat them. <laughs> And speaking of us wanting to eat them, well, that's important, of course. We all know, we all know the cultural significance of turkey related to Thanksgiving. It's been the traditional meal for that, well, from the 19th century, really. So the Pilgrims original Thanksgiving, the 1621 ceremony after, after they barely, they barely survived, uh, you know, their, fir their first year in in North America after the, the Mayflower expedition that really didn't go all that well. The first Thanksgiving ceremony included basically a whole bunch of meats and fish, basically any, whatever wild game they could capture because, because that, was, that was most of their available meat. And that included turkeys, but not particularly specially. <laughs> you know, turkeys were on the menu, but so was venison, so, so were Geese, so so a fish, so not so nothing that special there from Turkey, and and the, the immediate successors are continuing the Turkey tradition at that point. You know, the Thanksgiving tradition at that point really didn't focus on Turkey as a the particular centerpiece of the meal. As I said, that that tradition came along later, night in into the nineteenth century. You know, around around the time when. Thanksgiving was maybe official U.S. holiday, and pro probably more the reason for turkey was not so much as a reference for to the pilgrims as just convenience, because a, tur a turkey is big enough to ser to serve a large family meal, but small enough that it's convenient to cook in an ordinary oven. It's not, you know, it's not so much work as uh, roasting a ho a whole venison or a, or a whole lamb or a pig. <laughs> So there's Thanksgiving significance. Another cultural cultural aspect of turkeys that should be noted for 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 us, you know, we we live here in New Jersey, and well, before before 
before our ancestors, the, Na the Native Americans of, of New Jersey were the Lenape people. And the, and the Lenape di divided themselves into three major kinship clans. The Wolf Clan, the Turtle Clan, and the Turkey Clan. That's right, turkeys are, the, are very, very important for the, pe for the peoples of our state. And I think that's, a, that's enough talk of tur turkey for the moment, so let's talk, talk about research. You know, I, I just gave you a lot of different facts about turkey and you know, nothing exotic, so Wikipedia provide all of it, but I was reading a lot of different articles to, to click through everything and, and to get, and to get get the nice the nice images that, that I captured and made, and made made free along with this video for anyone to anyone to use you know you know the drill by now so enjoy enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday I hope I hope you I hope you've learned more about what you're what you're about to enjoy at your feast and have at it. <laughs>